What's up everybody, Nick George Wire, back for the 10th inning, here with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we saw Frank Robinson become MLB's first black manager in its history, signing with the Cleveland Indians in 1974 for the 1975 season. We don't have any kind of history like that today, but we do have some more golf to talk about, as well as some more baseball postseason action to get into. So if y'all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This day in sports history. We will start out today in 1873 at the British Open on the men's side, and Tom Kidd would defeat Jamie Anderson by one stroke to claim the major. Five years later, we go back to the British Open in 1878, and Jamie Anderson would win his second of three consecutive championships, defeating Bob Kirk by two strokes. Finally, in the 1800s, in 1895, at the first U.S. Open on the men's side in golf, Horace Rollins would win the inaugural event, defeating Willie Dunn by two strokes. Now we get into the 20th century, and we will start in 1901. In the 11th running of America's Cup, the U.S. Yacht of Columbia would defeat Shamrock II of the United Kingdom 3 to nothing for the win for America. Now we go over to Major League Baseball, started in 1906, and the Chicago Cubs would defeat the Pittsburgh Pirates 4 0 to end the MLB season with a 116 36 record, a 763 winning percentage, and one that has been unmatched since. Stay in Major League Baseball 10 years later in 1916, and Reds right handed pitcher Christy Mathewson would face off against Mordecai Brown of the Cubs in the career finale for each pitcher, making this the first time that two future Hall of Fame pitchers made their final appearance in the same game. Both pitchers would end up going 9 innings though. Matthewson would get the edge though as the Reds would end up winning 10-8 to over the Cubs. Now we move to the 1924 World Series which would see the New York Giants become the first team to play in four consecutive World Series as they would win Game 1 4-3 against the Senators. Four years later in 1928 at the 25th edition of the World Series, the first game would officially be played at Yankee Stadium with the Yankees defeating the Cardinals 4-1. Move up two years to 1930, stay in baseball, and the Philadelphia Athletics pitcher Jack Quinn at age 47 would become the oldest player to play in a World Series game, pitching two innings in Game 3 of a 5 nothing loss to St. Louis. Move up 14 years now to 1944, stay in baseball, and the only All-St. Louis World Series would open as the visiting St. Louis Browns would defeat the Cardinals 2-1 on a George McQuinn home run for the opening game of the series. 11 years later, we stay in baseball in 1955, and the Brooklyn Dodgers would win their first World Series after a 2-0 victory in Game 7 against the Yankees after the Dodgers had lost their previous seven World Series attempts. Four years later in 1959, we had the first baseball World Series game take place west of St. Louis as the LA Dodgers would defeat the Chicago White Sox 3-1 in Game 3 in Los Angeles, and there was a record 92,394 fans in attendance for this game. Move to 1964, go over to women's golf. At the LPGA Championship, Mary Mills would shoot a final round 69 to win her first of two LPGA Championships, two shorts ahead of defending champion Mickey Wright. We go back to baseball now in 1967, and the St. Louis Cardinals would defeat the Boston Red Sox 2-1 in Game 1 of the World Series, and this would be the first World Series since 1948 to not feature either the Yankees, Giants, or Dodgers. Two years later in 1969, Major League Baseball would hold their first league championship series. In the National League Championship Series, the New York Mets would defeat the Braves 9-5. And in the American League Championship Series, the Baltimore Orioles would defeat the Twins 4-3. Now we go to the CFL in 1987 and Winnipeg defensive bat James Jefferson would score two touchdowns on interception returns. However, he never actually made an interception that game. Both of the scores would be on laterals for Jefferson, and the Bombers would end up winning 47-14 over the Tiger Cats on the day. Move over to hockey now in 1991, and the Edmonton Oilers would trade their captain, Mark Messier, to the New York Rangers in exchange for Bernie Nichols, Stephen Rice, and Louis DeBrusque. And we stay with hockey in 2001, and the Boston Bruins would retire future Hall of Famer Ray Borch's number 77 jersey in the season opener against the Mighty Ducks, winning 4-2 on the day. 
stay in 2001 and go over to baseball. We talked about them a little bit yesterday. They're back again today. We have both Barry Bonds and Ricky Henderson. Start with Barry Bonds. San Francisco Giants Barry Bonds would hit his 70th home run of the season in a 10-2 win versus Houston, tying Mark McGuire for the most home runs in a single season. He would end up beating it. Then in the San Diego Padres game, Ricky Henderson, after a third inning home run, would break Ty Cobb's record to become the all-time leading run scorer in baseball history, scoring his 2,246th run. Now we go to college football in 2003, and Texas Tech Red Raiders quarterback B.J. Simons would set a Big 12 conference record with eight touchdown passes, leading Texas Tech to a 59-28 win over rival Texas A&M. Move up to 2009 in golf at the Senior Players Championship, Jay Haas would win his third and final Champions Tour major, one stroke ahead of runner-up Tom Watson. And one year later, we moved from individual golf to team golf in the Ryder Cup in 2010. Team Europe would win 14.5 to 13.5 over the USA. And we end today's video off in 2018 in the NFL. New England Patriots' Tom Brady would become only the third NFL quarterback to record 500 career touchdowns as he connected with Josh Gordon in a 38-24 victory over the Colts. So there you go. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize. But I'll see everybody tomorrow for Nick O'Dwyer and the 10th inning. See ya.